Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy hump day. I hope your Wednesday is treating you well. Um, today we're going to switch it up a little bit from doing plyometrics and change of direction that I've been doing for a while now. Um, and we're going to put the stretch on today, stretch and core. Um, going to be a really low key Wednesday, kind of shake off what we did Monday uh, and kind of stretch us out for the rest of the week. Uh, when you come back on Friday, we're going to kind of do a little bit of a holiday sp or a Halloween special. Um, <laughs> should be pretty, should be a pretty good circuit. A little bit of everything on that day, pretty good intensity. So, um, all you're going to need today, I have a mat, uh, a yoga lock, and then I do have a strap. Um, if you have a long strap, you could also use a belt. Um, if you have a long, large beach towel, something like that to help hold your leg up. We did this about three weeks ago. Um, it's going to be just a stretch the series taking us through hamstring, adduction, and abduction. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to head down to my mat. If you need to grab these things, go ahead. Uh, definitely not a lot of intensity today. So sure and steady. So I'm going to lay down flat on my mat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the strap. I'm going to do my right leg first. Uh, and my strap's long enough that I can do both hands, kind of hold it, because I'm going to be bringing my leg up with it. Down. Now, if you have a really short mat or a short strap, or let's say you are using a belt and you can't quite do this kind of length, loop the belt around the foot and then you can just hold on to it with one strap because it's just trying to get your heel up and get range of motion is, is what we're using the strap for. So I'm going to put the strap kind of where the arch of my foot is, and then I'm going to lay back on my mat. Okay, and nice and comfortably, what we're going to do is we're going to bring, in this case, my right leg up just to where it's comfortable on my own power, and then I'm going to grab the strap, and I'm going to bring me into a little bit of a deeper stretch. Not too much, nothing too crazy. We're going to hold that for five seconds and release it. Then I'm going to take it under tension again. And this time I'm going to try and go just a little bit further. And again, thinking two to three slow breaths or about five to 10 seconds. Then you're going to release it again. Let that leg relax. And then let's go and stretch it a third time. And you'll notice as I get deeper in this stretch, I'm fighting to try and get my legs straight. But what also I'm doing is my back is flat on the mat. I'm not trying to arch or lift my hip up to get my leg to go further. I'm keeping my hips and my back flat on the mat just so I can feel that deep stretch in my hamstrings. You can probably feel this all the way up into your hips. Go ahead and relax it a little bit. From there, we're gonna go into um, abduction, which means the leg is gonna go away from me. It's gonna go towards the camera. And when I do this, I'm supporting my leg because I wanna control how far I get this stretch into the adductors, adductors, uh, your groin area. Um, and the other thing you're wanting to pay attention to is to make sure you're not rolling over and bringing your hips off the deck. Again, you want to keep your hips nice and flat. You can reach with both arms. And just get to where you get a good deep stretch. Hold it there for a couple of seconds and then bring it up about halfway. Relax for a second and then go back down. If you're either trying to bring the foot closer to the ground, if that's if you can get close to the ground, the other thing you can do is you can come up a little bit and come towards your head. And that's your toe coming up towards your head. Holding that for a couple of seconds, coming up. And this is our third time. Going down. And some, uh, you'll feel this uh, in the adductors, but you'll also feel it is deep in the glutes, deep in the back of the hip. Kind of similar to what you get when we do those 90-90 stretches. Go ahead and relax and come bring that foot back up. From here, now we're gonna go into adduction 
where I'm gonna have my foot and my leg cross my body. And again, I'm trying to keep my hips flat on the ground. And again, I'm not trying to roll into this. I just wanna stay flat and just have it all coming from the leg as far as crossing the body. And I, mean, I am using this strap to support and to kind of control how much stretch I'm giving myself. So you'll hold it for a couple of breaths, then you can bring it up and relax. Crossing the body going over. If you can, you can make it a little deeper. Um, you can either deep cross further over the body or like what we did with the other stretch, you can pull on the strap and try and bring your toes closer up towards your head. Both will make this stretch quite a bit deeper. And cross back over. Let the glute relax and then go into your third climb. It's nice and easy. Go ahead and come back to center. We're going to go ahead and lower that leg back down to the ground. You want to come up to a seated position. We'll go ahead and switch legs. Like I said, a nice low key Wednesday. Now, if you've been sitting at your desk for a few hours by now with school, uh, sometimes whew, this is the trick to get rid of all that desk. So now I'm going to lay back down, pulling on the strap and under my own power, I'm gonna bring this leg up. And again, we're gonna start with a good deep hamstring stretch. So controlling my strap, I bring it to where I'm comfortable. I do feel the stretch on my hamstrings. After a couple of breaths, you relax a little bit. Go back into this stretch, make it a little deeper. Relax a little bit. Here's our third time, pulling on that strap, make it a little deeper this time. You will find that one leg's probably more flexible than the other. Let you know you gotta catch up on that other side. Go ahead and relax a little bit. Now we're gonna go back into uh, abduction and that's where the leg's gonna go away this time. So that's gonna hit your adductors, your groin area, and deep, deep hip muscles um, under your glutes. Hold it for a couple of breaths, bring it up a little bit, relaxing, going back down, trying to go back down a little bit further if you need to, pull on that strap and raise that leg up towards your head. with the hips still staying in contact with the floor. You can get all kinds of range of motion if I start picking my hips and my shoulders up, but I want to stay flat and pointing to the ceiling. Go ahead and relax. And lowering down third time, nice and deep. And just relax that leg, you, your upper body can hold it. Go ahead and relax and bring that leg up. And then from here, we're gonna go into adduction where the leg is gonna cross the body. You should feel the stretch back in your glutes, even a little bit into the lower back. Just to where it's comfortable, relax and cross the body. Going back over, this is number two. If you can, make it a little deeper. Nice and easy, trying to take the tension away from the day. Staying low to the halfway point of the week. Going back to center real quick. Got one more to go. Go ahead and cross the body. Nice and easy, you're not putting so much tension on your leg that you start holding your breath. You still wanna breathe through these. Go ahead and come back to center. Come on down and relax and come on up. Nice job, good work. And that's, that's your little strap series for stretching. From there, um, I'm gonna use a yoga block. We're gonna go into a butterfly stretch. 
Um, if you have the flexibility for it, you won't need anything to sit up on. But you can either, with me using a yoga block, you can use a, a foam roller, you can roll up a blanket, you can stack some textbooks. Uh, it all depends on how much mobility you have in your hips. Um, I'm still working on my hip mobility, so I'm coming up about, say about three to four inches. So what I'm gonna do for a butterfly is if I put my knees in front of me, and then I want my soles of my feet to meet each other. And that gets you into a butterfly position. From there, it depends on how close your heels are gonna come up into your adductors, all right? And you only wanna walk up to where you can handle it and still sit upright, okay? Um, a lot of times if I wanna sit upright, I'll grab my shins, engage my back, squeeze my shoulder blades, sit nice and tight. While I'm grabbing my shins, I'll use my elbows and push down onto the edge of my thighs, trying to drive my knees into the ground, okay? I'm gonna open up your groin. Um, it also gets a lot of back activation, especially if you're trying to sit up. Normally what happens is we get into this position and we all like to slump and slouch into it and try and push from here. But you wanna still activate your core while you're doing this. So grab your shins, push down, and drive your chest up. You should feel your uh, lats engage and some of your uh, mid-back muscles will engage to help support. And that's what you're looking for to keep a good, nice, straight, neutral spine. And go ahead and relax when you kind of shake and wing it out a little bit. Let's go ahead and push down. And again, trying to drive that chest up and keeping that back flat. We do try to engage our core while we do some of these stretches. Go ahead and relax. Shake it out a little bit. And last time. And go ahead and relax. Come on back to your mat. You can come off your yoga block or if anything you were sitting on. From there, um, we're gonna go into a uh, quad stretch, but it's gonna be a kneeling quad stretch. And how this works is one leg's gonna go up, one leg can come forward. Normally what I'll do is I'll use a chair to rest my quad on. Once I get balanced there, then I'll come up to a seated position. This is the position you're looking for. If having your knee on, on a mat is too intense, you can stand up and you can slide a yoga block or roll up a blanket or a, a towel, something to add some padding in between there if this feels too intense. I know a lot of times for me it's a wood floor, um, but from there if I wanna make it more intense, I'll go and grab my toes from here and I'll draw my heel to my butt, okay? Oop. And that's what the chair's for, for me anyways, if I lose my balance. And then I'll go ahead and relax. Go ahead and come down. We're gonna give that knee and that leg a break. Go into the opposite leg. Um, and I'm using a chair. You can use the side of your couch if you have a good stable couch. And you will notice one leg's gonna wanna do it a little easier than the other. And from here, for me, like on my left side, I'm really tight in my hip flexors, so I might not even grab back. As I sit into the stretch and it gets a little bit deeper for me, then I can reach back either from there or from the ankle and pull it closer in, right? We work within where our body is comfortable because this is a little more intense of a way to stretch that quad versus doing fanny kickers, or even a quad pull with a tabletop. Okay, go ahead and relax. We're gonna come to the side, opposite side one more time. Now, if I wasn't using a chair with this, and I was just flat on the ground, I would come into a lunge position, reach back, and pull my leg up. And that's, that's how I would do it without a chair. I like having the chair there. Um, it helps me to keep my balance sometimes, especially if I, you a lot of leg work either the day of or the day before um, you can lose some of your stability just having some fatigue relax let's 
go to the other side. Use the chair for this one, just so you can see. You can do this, um, you know, AstroTurf. If you got a thick AstroTurf, it's pretty comfortable uh, with the padding there, and you can reach back. Whoop. Coming up. Whoop. Hang on one sec. Hamstrings engaging a little too much. This feels good for me today because I did my legs pretty good yesterday. So it looks like I'm having my hamstrings cramping. <laughs> and go ahead and relax. That's our kneeling quad stretch from there. We're gonna go into um, a figure four for glutes. Uh, if I sit with both legs in front, what you're going to do is you're going to decide either right or left is going to go over, making a figure four. Okay? And from here, what I'm trying to do is, since it's my left leg, I'm trying to get my right arm around to hug this leg and draw it closer to my chest. Okay? Now, if this is really easy for you, what you can do is you can tuck this opposite leg under to make it more intense. I'm not going to do that because it's too intense for me. I'm just gonna have a leg straight and go with my figure four. But if you do need to add some intensity, um, that front leg, you can tuck it under uh, and it'll give you just a deeper glute stretch, okay? After a few breaths, we'll go ahead and relax. We'll switch legs. One comes over. I'm thinking this foot, I wanna try and get it up to my knee before I go and hug. And again, opposite arm. Try to wrap around as much as you can, pulling this knee up to my chest. And after a few breaths, I'm going to go ahead and switch sides again, opposite side. And what you might find is after going through one or two sets of this, you will need to tuck your leg. That's what, we're trying, that's what we're all trying to build up to. And after a few breaths, I'm gonna go ahead and relax. Come back over. And if I can't get this opposite arm, I'll pull with this, the arm on the same side, and then reinforce it with the opposite arm. Still just trying to draw that knee to my chest. Relax. From here, I'm gonna push my chair back, make a little room so I don't knock too much more stuff over. The next stretch we're gonna go into is what's called a scorpion. Um, and this is good for the lumbar spine, almost into the thoracic spine, but you have to be really careful with it because it's intense. Um, you're going to be laying on your belly, and we're going to cross one leg over the other. Do this stretch really, really slow and find out where you're comfortable. This isn't typically a stretch you just throw yourself into because it's easy. Um, you could cause injury in the lower back. So a scorpion, if I'm on my belly here, and if you need for support, key your arms out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right leg up and it's gonna cross my body. Now this is where I'm trying to keep this hand in contact and I just go as far as it's comfortable. Notice I'm not trying to flop myself over and have this leg touch the floor because all through the lumbar to the thoracic spine, this gets twisted up. This can be pretty intense to hold. So you only go as far as it's comfortable. After a couple breaths, you slowly come back, back into contact with the ground, and then you go to the opposite side. And again, leg comes up and then it crosses. Keeping contact in, uh, with the floor with the hands to kind of help stabilize. I can push with this opposite hand into the floor to kind of brace 
and make sure I don't open up and fall over. Coming back to center. Coming up, across the body. Now you notice I'm keeping my leg fairly straight. If you wanted to add some intensity, you can bend the, the foot, point the toe to help drive. But that, that's just another level of it. Typically for me, being comfortable, um, I just keep my leg straight and cross over. Coming back over last time. Go ahead and come back to center and come on, come on up to a kneeling position. And that's your scorpion stretch. Um, really good for, it is a really good stretch, but it is one that you want to take your time, work through your range of motion to see how much mobility you have within uh, those vertebrae. Because we're all going to be a little different. There's some of us that will be able to touch the floor and have our knees bent. And others, you're going to be similar to me, where it's going to be like, ooh, straight leg, get across. Wow, I feel it. And that's, that's where we just keep building up range of motion. So second to last stretch we have for today is gonna to be a kneeling T-spine. And this is where, since we've already done scorpion and it's really intense through the lumbar spine, we only need a little bit of T-spine. So instead of thread the needle, we're gonna have an elbow up towards the arm. I'm gonna be in this like mild child's pose here where I almost have my heels on my butt. Uh, kind of in between quadruped and relaxing. I'm gonna be just about halfway in between. From there, I'm gonna take my hand, put it up behind my head. You can even have it up by the ear if, you, if you're one of the people that like to pull. But you're just gonna come down. I'm gonna try and touch my elbow to my wrist, then open up and try and raise my elbow to point at the ceiling and then come back, okay? That's my second rep. I'm thinking I want to get about five reps per side and two to three sets. Today I'm only going to do two sets. Then I'm going to come down after you get about five or so reps in, I'll come down, I'll plant with the other arm, opposite arm up over my ear again, point and twist. There's one. Since, since that stretch isn't too intense, I'll just go right into the next one. I don't need a lot of rest in between. Low key Wednesday. <laughs> nice and easy. So from here, second set. Whew. Trying to shake off all our desk work. Second to last one. Coming down, switching sides. Again, I'm thinking five reps. There's my third one. After your fifth, come on down, come to center. Good job, nice work. We have one exercise left. Grab a little water come to a standing position. So, this last one, you'll notice I got our box here. Um, you can use a wall, something that's pretty stable. What we're gonna go into is a, ro a single leg Romanian deadlift. Um, it's similar to the, the part, you remember when we do Frankenstein walks and then come down, whoop, straight leg here. The change is gonna be is I'm gonna do a little hip rotation. So that's what the wall is for, for the stable object. If I plant on my left leg, 
and I come down and I grab and I get into this single leg position right here where I'm trying to straighten this leg, feel it through the hamstring and the glute. Now this is where over time we're gonna get to where we don't need this, but for now, what I'm looking to do is open up. Right? Gets a little shaky because you got that adductor in that groin area. And then you come back down, face, and come down and come up. And then you can switch sides, come forward. Now I'm gonna go the opposite direction. And I'm trying to open that hip up. Trying to turn sideways, coming back, facing in, and coming down. Right? This is a little different. Uh, that plant leg opening up, you're going to feel it in the adductor and in the glute. It's a little more intense of make for your RDL, um, but it definitely gets the hip activation we're looking for. So let's go one more round on both sides, and then we'll get working into core. All right, so from my leg, coming forward, bracing, getting my balance, using my surface to open up. It does take quite a bit of balance. Hold for a few breaths, and then come back to center. Coming down, relax for a second, and opposite leg. This will be our last rep of the stretch. Once you get your balance here, holding, open up. Come back to center, coming down, and relax. Good job, nice work. That is our stretch. So that was about 25 minutes of stretch today. Um, if that's all you were after, good job, nice work. Hopefully it all feels pretty good right now shake off that desk work. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of core. Uh, should take uh, 15 to 20 minutes, and then I'll send you off on your day. So come with me, come on down. Again, mainly all you're gonna need is a mat, if you wanna use one. What we're gonna start with is a hollow hold. Um, how these work is I'm gonna pick my legs and arms up, and I'm gonna try and hold like a really shallow U think maybe it can start as much as two to three inches or come up to about you know 45 50 degrees but that's gonna be your hollow hold and you're trying to hold that position this is gonna be a little more of isometric work um, and we're shooting for 30 seconds if your head neck and arms get burned out you can bring those to the ground and keep your legs up if the back's really hurting, drop the legs and just work it from here. Okay? So a couple ways to work the modification. Uh, so 30 seconds, go to a hollow hold. We'll go ready, set, begin. Now pick an angle that you can still breathe. You don't want to try and hold this for 30 seconds like holding your breath for 30 seconds. Find a range of motion that works. You'll notice 15 seconds to go. Over time, you're gonna look to take up the intensity, but start wherever you're comfortable. Go five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Grab a deep breath. We're gonna go into flutter kicks. For flutter kicks, I like to put my hands under my hips. Helps keep my hips at a good angle to where I don't fin feel a pinch in my lower back. And for flutter kicks, I will, I will look up, kind of bring my shoulders up, and then just a few inches off the ground, just little kicks. Okay, 30 seconds. If the head gets tired, just lay it back down on the ground and keep your kicks going. Ready, set. Go. Nice and steady. Pick a pace that you can maintain. Still want to be breathing. 15 seconds.
five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Nice work, good job. From here, we're gonna do a, I call it legs up and crunch. It can either be legs up or knees up, that's up to you. The crunch part, without my upper body, all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take my hands and touch the ceiling with my knees up, same thing, with my legs up, same thing, okay? So, legs up is the most intense, knees up, going from there. Go ahead and get ready. Set it, begin. seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Nice work. Good job. With your heels flat on the ground, we're going to go into heel touches. You can either have your head close to on the ground if you want it to be a little more intense. Bring your head and shoulders up, but you're looking to touch your heels. Now, the further my heels get away from my body that I can still touch, the more intensity. The closer, the easier the exercise, okay? Let's go ahead and get ready. 30 seconds, set, begin. Pick a pace that works for you. Something you can maintain that whole 30 seconds. Almost there. Five, four, three, two, one. And relax, nice work, good job. Coming over. You gotta at least get one lower back exercise, right? Can't leave you without those. Um, we're gonna be doing swimmers today. Uh, it's kind of a single arm, single leg version of Superman. And what you're thinking is, is opposite arm, opposite leg. Um, so if I raise up my right arm, I want my left leg to go with it. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and get ready. 30 seconds, set. Go. Trying to squeeze all the way from my glutes up to my rear delt. And that's the back of the shoulder is where I'm trying to squeeze. Almost there. 10 seconds. Go five, four, three, two, one and relax. Good job, nice work. That's round one. One down, two to go. Grab a little water and we'll tackle this second set. Again, sometimes we need these low key days. Gives ourselves um, time to recover. You know, if we had a few hard workouts, something similar to like Monday and Friday, we might need one another day to recover. So something like this is totally appropriate. You can feel your entire body kind of wake up, um, increases circulation, uh, but it also helps you to where we don't do tear the muscles down anymore and we want them to recover. So a low key day is not a bad thing. Getting ready for our second set, starting with hollow holds. Ready, set, begin. And some of us might have our arms and legs a little bit higher. If you need more intensity, please go for it. Fifteen seconds. Five, four. 
two, one, and relax. Arms and legs down, hands underneath their pelvis, going into flutter kicks. Ready, and begin. And these can be as slow or as quick as you want. Try not to bang your heels on the ground. Keep them up. 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And relax, good job, nice work. Going legs up, crunch. That can either be with the legs straight up or from bent knee. I'm going bent knee. Ready, set, begin. Fifteen seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Come on down. Good job. Getting set up for heel touches. Head can stay down or head can come up. And then you pick the distance. The further those feet go away, the harder the exercise. Set. Begin. Just a good steady pace. Make sure you're touching every time. 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Awesome job. Way to go. Nice work. Almost done with our second set. Coming over, getting ready for swimmers. Remember, opposite arm, opposite leg. Ready, and begin. Fifteen seconds. Trying to squeeze that backside. Don't let your arms and legs just swing up. Squeeze those muscles in the back. Four, three, two, one, and relax. Nice work, good job. Coming up, grabbing a little bit of water. Grabbing a little air. Now those swimmers can also be done at a quicker pace. I'm being really deliberate with my movements now, for now. Because um, the tendency is, is, if we get tired, is we just like to swing our limbs. And we want to squeeze from the back and the glutes. So, just grabbing a little air. Just coming down, back to our backs. This is our last set. Starting with hollow hold. <laughs> Ready, and begin. Keep breathing, Don't hold your breath. 15 seconds. Five, four, three, Two, one, and relax. Good job, nice work. Little air, hands go underneath the pelvis. Get ready, flutter kicks. Set, begin. And again, still not holding your breath. Fifteen seconds.
five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Coming out, a couple of good deep breaths. Remember, little crunches, legs up or legs bent. Getting ready, set, begin. seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Nice work. Good job. Feet flat on the ground. Going into heel touches. Ready and begin. Almost there. 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Nice work coming over. Last exercise of the day. Going back into our swimmers. Ready and begin. Squeezing that glute, trying to work all the muscles through the back. Get them to contract and then relax. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Come on up. Give yourselves a hand. Good job, everybody. Nice work. Grab a little air. And like I said, this is a low key Wednesday. Um, you know, you guys have to do hours at the desk. A lot of the stretching core was kind of just working that midsection and the hips out. You know, from sitting in that seated position all day, got to work that out sometimes. So Friday, um, it's going to be Halloween circuit, survival, face the monsters. Let's get busy. So come on back on Friday. We'll get those heart rates up and get those muscles burning. Thanks for joining us today. If you need to get a hold of me.